Hi everyone, this is Onur Öztürk. I am a postdoc at Cornell University and today I am going to present our study entitled Enhancing the Performance of Fiber Reinforced Concrete by Using Two-Stage Mixing Approach, which is a part of my PhD thesis that I completed in the beginning of this year. I will start with a little bit background information about the use of fibers and two-stage mixing approach. Previous studies show that the use of fibers can be a way to improve sustainability of concrete payments by improving the mechanical performance as well as durability as a result reducing the material use for the construction of structures. And also it's well known fact that uh, quality of the fiber cement vicious matrix interface has a considerable impact on the fiber enforced concrete payment fiber enforced concrete performance. Two stage mixing approach is a method that's firstly implemented in 2005 to improve the performance of recycled aggregate mixtures by improving the interface between the recycled aggregates and new cementitious matrix, which is done by filling the cracks and pores around the recycled aggregate with a high-strength cementitious matrix. In that study, they used two different mixing approach as a normal mixing approach and two-stage mixing approach. For the normal mixing approach, they put dry materials and water and they mix them all together to prepare the concrete samples. For the two-stage mixing approach, First, they put the aggregates half of the mixing water and they mix them, then put the cement and remaining half of the uh, mixing water to prepare the samples. Based on the test that they did, they, did, uh, they report the compressed strength values for the varying uh, recycled aggregate replacement levels. As you see in this figure, the bottom line shows the result that they got for normal mixing approach and the top line shows the results that they got for the uh, two-stage mixing approach, and as you see, they they reported uh, considerable improvement in the performance for the two-stage mixing approach, and the uh, effect was found to increase with an increasing amount of recycled aggregate replacement level. And following this primary study, the researchers did different studies by using different recycled aggregate types, supplementary cementitious materials, and modified mixing methods to further improve the benefits that's obtained from two-stage mixing approach. In this study, we implement two-stage mixing approach to improve the interface between the fibers and cementitious matrix. The goal, so we use this embossed polypropylene fiber that you see here. As you see, the fibers are embossed, they have nodes on their surfaces, and the goal of the implementation of this two-stage mixing approach is to fill the nodes and the coat the fiber with a cementitious matrix which is tailored to improve the pull-out resistance of fibers. This is the overview to evaluate the effectiveness of the implemented methodology. We prepare the mixtures by using ordinary mixing approach and modified mixing approach, and we did uh, mechanical tests and microstructural analysis, as well as we did some analysis to understand the extent of the obtained contribution in a real scale application. In this case, we analyzed the concrete payment and the cost and environment impact analysis. We prepared four different mixtures, as you see here, a control mixture without fibers and two, three different uh, fiber-enforced concrete mixtures with different amount of silica fume usage from 0% to 4%. And the fiber amount was fixed to 0.5% by volume. And as you see, for all the fiber-enforced concrete mixtures, we prepared the mixtures by using standard mixing methodology and modified mixing methodology, which is two-stage mixing approach in this study. And we prepared five cylindrical, five prismatic specimens to use in the mechanical strength test, and the modulus of elasticity, compressed strength, and four-point bending test were carried out according to the relevant ASCM standard. So the mixing method that we implemented in this study for a standard mixing methodology, we put the dry materials to the mixer and mix them to obtain dry mixture. Then we add water and superplastizer mixture to the mixer. And then we put, uh, we mix them together one minute to uh, obtain wet mixture. Then we add polypropylene fibers in two, one minute while the mixture was running. And then we put, we mix the final mixture for one more minute to obtain fiber reinforced concrete mixture. For the standard mixing methodology, the water to cement ratio of the mixture was fixed to 60% for all the fiber reinforced concrete mixture. For the modified mixing approach, we use two different mixers, as a pan mixer for the main mix and mortar mixer mixer for the preparation of the binder slurry. Uh, as you see here, where first we separate the 20% of the binder and we mix this binder with a water uh, spark plasticizer mixture that corresponds to 35% of the binder. Again, as you see on the top, the water cement ratio for the main mix was 60%, but uh, for the cement binder slurry that you prepared here, 
uh, the water to binder ratio was 35%, which is done to improve the performance. And then we, after preparing this binder slurry, we put the polypropylene fibers in two minutes to obtain slurry coat polypropylene fibers. Simultaneously, in the pan mixer, the main mixer, uh, we put dry materials first and then mix them together to obtain dry mixture. Then we put the remaining person, the remaining part of the water sparplastizer mix, uh, mixture to the dry mix to obtain wet mix. Then we put the slurry coat polypropylene fibers into the main mixer and mix them together one more minute to obtain fiber and for concrete mixtures. These are the complex strength and modulus of elastic test results that we got based on the test that we did. As you see here, for most of the, most of, the, for all of the mixtures that we test here, compressed strength and modulus of elasticity results were found more or less similar, uh, with a slight increase with increasing amount of silica fume usage. When it comes to flexural performance test results, as you see, these are the results given for, from top to bottom, given for, uh, 0% silica fume usage, 2% silica fume usage, and, uh, 4% silica fume usage, and the, where the blue dashed lines on the figures shows the results for standard mixing and the red continuous dice lines are for the modified mixing. And all the, for all the three cases, as you see, uh, for the residual, uh, part, the after cracking part, the red lines were above the blue dashed lines, which shows the contribution of two stage mixing method. When we check the average results that we got based on the figures that I presented in the previous slide, the, again, the flexural strength results were found more or less similar for all the uh, fiber imposed concrete mixtures as well as the play, play mixture, but the uh, residual flexural strength values, the strength values after crack, obtained after cracking, were found better for the modified mixing methodology. When we normalize the uh, results by dividing the residual flexural strength values given on the left hand side figure by modus of rupture value, which is the flexural strength, uh, we got this figure. This is an important parameter for fiber reinforced concrete because this is the parameter people are mostly using to use to design fiber reinforced concrete structures. And as you see here, for all the three, all three mixture cases that we uh, examined, the modified the results were found better for the modified mixing methodology. And up to 30% increase in residual flexural strength ratio was obtained for the uh, mixtures. To see the extent in the microstructural analysis, to understand if the interface is really improved or not, uh, we did some uh, some EDX analysis. As you see, first we detached the uh, fiber carefully from the uh, cementitious matrix, and we did uh, EDX analysis to determine the elemental composition in the uh, area shown in the uh, figure. In the literature, lower calcium to silicate ratios mostly associated with the higher calcium silicate hydrate and lower calcium hydroxide and etrungite amounts. So we determined the calcium to silicon ratio for all the mixtures that we test here. Although the results were found similar for the uh, mixture without silica film, for the mixtures with, with silica film, uh, the lower uh, calcium to silicon ratios were obtained for the modified mixing methodology compared to standard mixing methodology, which is also another uh, I think that shows that the implemented method improves the interface of the fiber and cement. And then the, by using these results, we did, we determined the thickness for a pavement and did some uh, cost and environmental impact analysis. These are the traffic, environment, and soil parameters, as well as traffic spectrum used for the design. An Indian Road Congress method was implemented for the design. To design fiber reinforced concrete mixtures, we use increased modulus of rupture uh, approach, uh, which basically increased the modulus of rupture used in the design by using the residual flexural strength ratio, which I showed in one of the previous slides. These are the material parameters used in the design, and by using the material parameters given here and the design methodology that, that I explained in the previous slide, we got the required thickness values for all the mixtures tested in the study. As you see, by using the fibers, we found up to 13% reduction in the required thickness, and the modified mixing methodology was found to improve the performance and reduce the thickness more 6%. Uh, and then by using the thickness requirements uh, given in the previous slide, we determined the material required to produce one meter square uh, concrete pavement, and we got the cost and carbon dioxide emission for the uh, 
uh, unit uh, unit concrete ingredients. As you see here, the results, the uh, values were taken from the local local suppliers from Turkey and some uh, literature studies. Then the determined uh, cost and carbon dioxide emission values that we got for unit payment area are presented in this figure. And based on the figures, fibers were found to increase the cost up to 35 percent, but reduced the uh, carbon dioxide emission of the mixture uh, up to 16 percent. And modified mixing methodology was found to further reduce the cost and carbon dioxide emission up to 6 percent. So the paper that we prepared based on the Things that I just explained has just been published in Construction and Building Materials. You can use the link here or the uh, QR code to access the article for free. Thank you so much. That's all from me.